Well, welcome to this, a brand new episode of Low Gear, and uh, I'm in New Plymouth at the uh, truck exhibition they have down here each year. And uh, lots of trucks from the local area, but over there is a, a Pacific. So this is a, a 1974 Pacific P9, and uh, it started life um, at Shell BP and Todd Oil Services, and it was yellow. But what a great job they've done to this. Look at that. And uh, this was bought brand new in New Plymouth, and what it was was yellow, and it belonged to Shell Oil. It's never done logs. I'd say 99.999 of the Pacifics that came to New Zealand went straight to Kayangaroa and they did logs, but not this one. So this has been beautifully restored. So what a fabulous restoration job they've done with this one. But next door is a scammel. And uh, we, we did a, a story with uh, Stan Williamson and of course he had a whole fleet of these things. If you're watching this Stan, we're looking at yeah. one of your old trucks and one of your old drivers. Yeah. So what was your name again? Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown, of course, yeah. is written on the bloody door. Yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. Yeah. Okay, we'll just jump in the thing now. There's no step anywhere. In fact, if you look at this piece here, it looks like um, the bottom of a, of a guy. We did a story on a, a guy back in the day. So there's one panel here, which is a fair way up, and then you've got to swing yourself, go all the way up into the cab. Full width cab. I'm sure the seat goes bad a wee bit, but um, it's got a road ranger in it. Very basic, the the layout. It's got a, I like the, the flat steering wheel. You can just sort of swing it with the heel of your hand and it, you know, when you're driving, it's just easy peasy. But uh, as I say, a, a basic British, if you like, uh, panel layout, courtesy of Leyland. But to, to bring this back to what it looks like uh, now is, you know, it costs a lot of money, but the, I guess if you've rebuilt it and it actually works like this one does, it's worth it, so your, your hobby becomes your work, which is, which is great. And Dennis was telling me that, um, that Stan Williamson in the heyday had 112 of these Leyland Scammels. I'm not quite sure if that's correct, but Stan, if you're watching, you'll know. Give me a call. But uh, that's a, a lot of trucks. And um, he was saying before that in order to sort of... He was worried about his tax, and his accountant said, you need to buy 12 more... Leyland Scammels, and so he did, and uh, Dennis was saying it cost a million and forty dollars. That's a, a lot of money back in the back in the seventies to uh, to buy, you know, just twelve trucks. But these days, I think you get uh, well one and a half uh, Kenworths or Western Stars or something for that. So, but I guess it was value for money. You got twelve. But anyway, it's just great to sit in the in the Scammel. Um, there's one of these on that goes on the on the runs. Stan Williams' son Elf and his wife and they drive around in a red one. Still painted up Stan Williams' colours and it's even got the name on the door. But anyway, the old Leyland Scammel and what happened to them is um, they went up down the gurgler about 80, something like that, and got sold to DAF. And so I guess these are, you know, Leylands are now called DAF. And you just might recognise the the truck across from us when we did the story about the swap and how the palm kernel system works or so there's our truck driver in front of his truck and his name's Roscoe. There he is. Hero. Living the dream. Good on you Roscoe. With the, with the scammels the bonnet opens out and the radiator actually swings out to give you access to this 8V71 uh, that's in here. The, uh, but isn't that just amazing technology of the time? Hello, sweetheart. If the radiator can swing out, the water can still go all through it without, without causing any, any problem with the, the swing. If you try to do it to the other uh, radiator, the whole thing will just turn to custard. So a great innovation. And uh, there it is, just in case you wanted to see what it looks like. But this was one of Stan Williams's trucks. And we can just close this. Yeah. That just locks into the slide the little panel across. Right, what we're going to do is kick the old 8V71 in the guts. So here we go. To the company of the band. The band in a 8V71. Here we go. 
listen to that. The old GM AV71. My uh, uncle Harry used to have a, uh, a, a 6E71 R190 and about 25 miles from home we went over the top of this hill and Auntie could hear the truck and then she put the dinner on. They got a sound all of their own. Amazing. The organisers of any truck show have to think about entertainment for the kids. These are usually family days. There's a band, hot dog stands, chips, candy floss and plenty of things for the kids to do so mum and dad can enjoy the trucks. This is an interesting paint job, it's a, it's a, a moku and you might remember um, in our Toll New Zealand talking trucks the Toll New Zealand trucks all had the, the big white uh, stripes coming in like this and that was supposed to represent the same as what this is representing only this is a, a lot better and Toll don't do that anymore they've just gone to the Toll green but in the day it was blue with the stripes and you still see the odd one on the road and there's, a, there's, there's green ones and I think they come from up north somewhere but it's great to see some innovation in the paint job, keeping it Kiwi. Look at that. I'm always talking about the, the Fords and the Chevs of the, of the 1940s, 1950s. And these are the, the Fords and the Chevs. There's a barrel nose behind me and, and, and the old Chev. There's a couple of them here. But um, still sporting the, the indicator, the little hand that come out in the old days. Still got one of those. And here's a, another one called Dolly. And I think we've been in Dolly before. I think we saw Dolly before she even looked anything like this. But uh, it's a 1946, so that makes it 68 years old. And I think the, the one next door is pretty much the same as well. I'll just check the date on that. And uh, it's a 1945. So between the two chefs, there's not a great deal of difference between them. So, uh, but although they're a year apart, they look pretty much the same. And of course, the old barrel nose behind us there. So the Taranaki truck show, what a great event and uh, I'll go and find Tony now and we can talk about the whole show. With me is Tony Coleman and um, when you first organised this, this is the first venue and then you had it up in Bell Block yep, that's right. and that was massive. Uh, how's this one? This is the third one when we were back where you started. Yeah, we couldn't get Bell Block this year so we had to come back here and just met no trailers, that was all. Oh, okay. Just to fit them all in, we couldn't right. have trailers. So. so that's why, that's, how many, oh, they all seem to be fifth wheelers. Yeah, or, yeah, truck and trailers, well, you know, you got the trucks and tractors, that's yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, How many trucks yeah. are more than you expected? The first time Good. you went out, we, 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 um, you said, absolutely blown away with the response. I think Same there's again. 107 or 108, yeah. but they're still getting their registrations in now, so, yeah. It's still going. Yeah, so there's at least 107, I can say that. There's certainly a, a great family atmosphere here, there's kids oh, yeah. everywhere, they're all yeah. enjoying the little ride around on the... On the machine, you've got a few old old uh, trucks here that yep. we spoke yep. about, yep. and that um, that old Pacific. Yep. I was the speaking to a few Pacific, guys here, yep. and they, they all remember it sort of, you know, working with the, the Shell BP Todd people. That's right. Yep. And yep. Uh, it was painted yellow like Shell. Yep. And it's probably one of the few trucks that, like those trucks, that didn't haul logs. Yeah. There's, I think there's only one or two that never did yeah. cart logs. Apparently. And that's one yeah. Of them. yeah. That's one yeah. of them. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. How long did it take you to get this this far? Oh, when did you start? Oh shit, I think we've been having meetings for must be five months now, really? I suppose. Yeah, oh. there's a lot involved, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of um, you know, the, the official didn't, the cops, the Yeah, you know, the you had to get all that sorted, yeah. yeah. You gotta have everything. So yeah. it's no mean feat to put on a truck show. No, no, <laughs> no. And the last thing was the weather. We had a spot of rain this morning there, but yeah, yeah, it was it's cleaned up. Raining so. pretty hard when we came in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. However, it hasn't it hasn't kept people away. Look nah, at that. Not it's at just all. Nah. Absolutely packed. Loads here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, we wanted. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And that's what you got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a truck here of the Soul Group that's got a. We were talking to you last time. It had some sort of uh, a bin on the back that. that oh, was pulls quite the trailer unique. inside the bin for the, the bullet wood. Yeah, bin wood. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. How does that work? Can we go and have a look? Yep, go and have a look, yeah. Yeah, yep. come and have a look at this, this uh, bin. It's just absolutely unique. <clears throat> so what happens there, you put your hoist up to about there, to the, the top of the cab, oh, yep. and you get the slope on the hoist there. Yep. You've got some ramps that you pull out 
from under here. Yes, just show us the ribs, Tony. Come out from there. They pull oh, okay. right out, they're about two metres long. One each side here and they hook on to these hooks just here. So those little, those are narrow ramps and there's enough to put That's it, those super tight. singles just roll out on those, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, I was expecting something about this white. Ah, no, so there's only an empty trailer, they spit out on that. Oh, wow. All different angles and that on the skid side, that doesn't really bother it too much. <laughs> no, so. Right, yeah. So how long's this trailer? I mean, how long's the, the, the truck deck? Obviously it's not quite long enough to fit the whole trailer. No, because it? it all comes down to your lengths and that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit on off end, I couldn't, couldn't tell you, is he? But isn't that amazing? Great thought goes in. So the, the trucks, the trailer's actually narrower. Yes, it is, yep. It's about an truck. inch either side narrower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. You've got a winch system up the front and the trailer runs out. Well, you, first thing you do is you put your tail door up there and the trailer comes out on the winch. You spit your trailer out, you go forward a bit, you hook it up. And the job's it, right. Yeah. And it goes Truck and trailer. Yeah. yeah. All hidden away. Yeah, so you can get up on the skid sights and wow. turn around. You yeah. don't have to try yeah. and get in there. And can they get it off? It's just a. It's a two minute job. Really? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Craft done this one and we've got so two like it. So you just tip it up, put the ramps back and yep. off she goes? Yep. Wow. All the that tail door there, obviously, because everything's at maximum height, sort of. Yep. Come, it's all been recessed and it sits up there. A lot of thought went into it. Yeah, wow. And uh, yeah. So, um, you're saying that, is it Mike Dan? Rob Dan. Rob Dan. Yeah, take her off. He's, he's in the logging business. Yeah. With his Peterbilts. Oh, he's got Kenworths and Scania's. And, oh, right. yeah, he's, he's got a couple of Peets, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's what we went down. We did a story about Peterbilts and, um, yeah, so he was, he had some modern ones working in the bush there. So we went to the bush gang, saw the whole operation. It was yeah. amazing. So it's him that's sort of this. He came up with the idea, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I think that's how it worked, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so it, it works, it does the job. Oh, it does very well, yeah. Good old Kiwi ingenuity. That's it. All over again. Tony, thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thanks Great for coming show down, once mate. again. And um, won't be good to go by. Yep. Enjoy. So will you be doing it again? Yes. Next year? No, every other year. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. So I'll get the phone call in, in, in 2017. That That's sounds right. like a long yeah, way away. No, yeah, it won't take long but, to come yeah, around. No, it won't. No. Good on you, mate. Well Thank done. you very much. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Bill. So Thank there you go, folks. We're at the uh, truck show in, in New Plymouth. And, uh, and in 2017, they're doing it all again. Around about the end of March, about the same time as what this is. So if you're in the area, come and enjoy yourself. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. Welcome to Smuggler's Pub and Cafe, open seven days a week with free parking all day. Our lunch menus have that fat old fashioned flavour where we treat you like treasure with the food you'll savour. We cater for children, grannies and granddads too, with special rates and privileges given to the elderly lunchtime crew. Our staff are friendly and kind and want to see you all come back time after time. Daytime or evening, it doesn't matter, give us a call on 546-4084 and we'll be happy to spoil you. I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. Welcome to the Mahindra Memory section. Mahindra New Zealand have come on board with our low gear show and are providing us with a Mahindra pickup ute for the use of during the whole of Series 2. Just a brief about Mahindra, you might be interested to know that in 1947 they secured the right to build Jeeps under license from Willys in the USA. Mahindra thought the Jeep was the perfect vehicle for India with their rugged terrain and rough rural roads. So they know a thing about building four-wheel drives. So Mahindra have been making vehicles for a long time. You might be interested to know that they also build tractors and they're the third largest manufacturer of tractors in the world. In our Mahindra memory section of low gear we'll be looking at some of the vehicles that most of you will remember from the 40s, 50s and 60s. First up is an interesting innovation they built into the early wartime Jeeps. 
So let's join Roger Humphreys from Nelson. Roger, the Land Rover was based on the Jeep. That's right. And um, I'll just pick this up. And this bonnet feels a lot heavier than the other one because, because it's made of steel rather than aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. <laughs> That's right. But um, the lights are, are recessed, so when you're travelling right. about, the, the yeah. planes don't see them. But what I thought was a, an outstanding innovation for a wartime machine, and you, you don't know what right. situations you're going to get yourself into, Nighttime. is you undo a little clip here, and the light headlight suddenly shines, and so you shines can the repair the engine. Well, if you get it on one side, you can always do the other side as well. So if you've got a, a problem there, you can put two lights up and you can see down both sides. So sure. Even if you're inside the cab, you could probably put the bonnet down. And see it. Yeah, yeah, so that, but, anyhow, but innovation, I mean, so innovation. simple. But, so simple. But, but there, and I don't know why Land Rover didn't actually do that. I don't know. I mean, it was just, you know, one of those little, one one of those little extras one of that I just think is amazing. Scenarios, yeah. <laughs> Several people built these during the war. I mean, right. you know, they needed so many, so yep. I think Ford was, was one. I mean, Ford would have had the, you know, the, the assembly line equipment right. all ready to yep. go, so they would have been able to turn them out quite quickly. Yes. And of course, they, they needed lots of them. And uh, yeah, so let's go and have a look at the, let's go and have a look at the real thing. Right, eh? Or Land Rover. With me is Richard Barker and, and Richard Land Rover. Everybody remembers Land Rover because that was the four-wheel drive of the you know, 50s and 60s. And uh, this is one of the first, the Series 1, but it was really based around the Jeep, which was a, a wartime utility vehicle, went anywhere, did everything. And uh, there's some unique features on, on the Jeep that uh, got incorporated into this, and some didn't. And this has got features that that hasn't, but that was built for a war. Yeah. Built for last about 25 days yeah. or something before it got written off, and, and this was built for farmers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps just like to run us through some of the features of the Series 1, remembering it's aimed at farmers. Yeah. You know, these were a copy of the Jeep chassis. They, the Jeep was 80 inch, these were 80 inch, and uh, they would prove themselves in the war, so uh, Land Rover stuck to the same size because yeah. they thought it was capable. And um, they and uh, Morris Wilkes, who designed the first one, based it on the Jeep, but he thought well, it would be a good farm utility vehicle, so he incorporated a, a drawbar on the back, um, and uh, he put um, power takeoffs on, so they could, people could plough, they could make hay, they could uh, oh, okay. mow field, fields. After the war, I guess all the farm machinery is all, you know, the whole place is up in a mess, and vehicles are scarce, and petrol is even scarcer. Yeah. yeah. And the, uh, and the Ferguson tractor wasn't actually d built when these ones were first designed, and, oh, okay. and, uh, and that's why they made them as a utility uh, vehicle. Right, right. Yeah. So when you finish the day, you go down and get to the shops and get yeah. some bread and butter and but, stuff. But uh, that's why the, the doors lift off on these, yep. uh, because uh, farmers are getting in and out of the vehicle all the time, so you yep. just take it, take the door around like that, and, uh, and then you just lift it up and take it away. So, you can just get in and out of your vehicle without opening your door, <laughs> or you can hang out the side and watch the fire. Sure. Um, so it's all very practical for farm use. Sure, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at this engine. Two seconds later, the door's back on again. Yeah. And the the, the bonnet will also okay. lift off just by by just sliding it across like that. Okay. And you can cart that away. So um, <laughs> everything just comes to, to pieces quickly. Um, this was the original uh, engine on this one here, the original number on the ownership papers is uh, correct for the vehicle. Uh, all the parts on you'll notice on here are dated 449, 449, carburetor 449. Um, the uh, the um, block's got a date stamp down there, 449. So all the parts are uh, pretty well correct for the year it was built. So, um, and you were saying this is a, a Rover engine? Like a car rover engine. This is the uh, same as the car engine and the P60 uh, rover car. So when did this change? I the, seem to remember that it, that it, this they just it, sort of a little flat. The, the engines in here, this is a 1600 engine, and by about 1951 they made a, a two litre, so what they call the Siamese bore, so they went up two litres, then they went to a spread bore that went through to 1958, and then after that they went to the 2.25 engine, which was a uh, a totally different engine. Right, yeah. yeah. 
But these so, were the original. So these are evolving, evolving, evolving yeah, as, yeah, as time yeah, goes by. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all simple, isn't it? Yeah, so simple. Yeah. Yeah. It just goes back on. Hang on, I'm not there yet. Oh. There you go. Down. And half a second and later it's back on again. Clip down. I see this uh, hasn't got a hasn't got um, any um, part for a put the uh, the wheel on. Yeah, that was optional in uh, in 1948 49 and um, that didn't come until later on oh, and, okay. um, and this one because it, they didn't want it didn't have it. I just see the spare wheels and a little purpose made dip in the back here. Yeah yeah that's a, it was always designed to even the ones that had the um, had the um, thing on the bonnet still have that there oh, so you've got the option of oh, okay. going bonnet or back here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. of course having that on the front makes that bonnet just a yeah. little bit more heavy. Yeah. yeah. In 1948 and 49, uh, because they were using Rover car parts, these yeah. are permanent four-wheel drive. Uh, so therefore, to go downhill or reverse, they have a ring pull in the floor here, which locks a ratchet because uh, they're permanent four-wheel drive. And if you went downhill without that pulled up, you, the vehicle could take off on you because the ratchet wasn't locked up and just three-wheel backwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so it's quite dangerous. So this is a, just a low range four yeah, wheel drive? Yeah, low or high range. Oh, okay. And then under the seat here, if we take that seat out, the seats are just lift, uh, put in with two little rubber plugs, so you lift them out. And under here, there's a uh, the lever to put the power take off uh, into gear. So you use this gear? Yeah, you use that, you put it into gear there, yep. and then you... Um, and then that drives the power takeoff. So, so you can have it going. And yeah, so you, and if you, oops, it's running away. So you start this up. And then, uh, so you, with that uh, in neutral, yep. uh, well, no, no, you select the gear there, you put this in neutral, I think it is. And then you just, you put that into, I don't know which way does it go. It falls out, does it? I can't remember which way it goes. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's just put up. Yep. See, there goes the power takeoff working at the back. <laughs> this power takeoff here is a very rare one. In 1948, they made 400 of these. That one's number 322, and that's 152. Um, and these have 10 splines. So if you want to just have power takeoff, you undo those four bolts, pull this right away. Yep. Or otherwise, you can use the belt pulley in, uh, out here. But all agriculture gear is six spline. So these were really uh, useless. So after this 400 in 1948, they actually um, turned them to six blind. Oh. Um, so there was only 400 ever made, and that one you'll see has got an X on it, yep. and that uh, stands for experimental. Uh, so it was just an experiment. On, so that power takeoff there is probably worth 5,000 by itself, just uh, oh because yeah, it's so it, rare. And it's got a full-size drive shaft. Yeah, full-size yeah. drive shaft that goes right through yeah, to the yeah. gearbox. Yeah, a lot of the, you know, when you follow a Land Rover, they've all got a hole here. Yeah, or they're, have, they're all yeah. made with that for, uh, yeah, for solar, solar, yeah. yeah. So some haven't, some have. Yeah. Wow. But you can see, like, the, the drawbar's been used quite a bit. See how it's worn? Yeah. Um, you know, on the holes there, so the, so the it has it. actually been used a lot. Yeah, at different points. Amazing. Yeah. So it must have been used for what it was designed for. Yeah. <laughs> In this little section, we continue our little story about Land Rovers, and we've got another series one here. And looking at these number rod, numbers, Roger, it looks like it belonged to the uh, the army. <laughs> yes, it's been left over them. Yeah, and and the army did all sorts of things with them. You know, they've added bits. They would have had the whole nine caboodle of all the accessories that go with a, a Land Rover, one would have thought. Right. Yeah, they originally started, I think, in 1951, around that era, not exactly know what it was, but, uh, yeah, the military had these for many years. And on the front, I, I've seen a, a couple of, like you see those on the front of a ship or a boat, you know, there's mm -hmm. the big camps and you wrap the rope around right. and, and you just feed the road through as it, that's right. and it pulled you out of the, out yep. of the murk, a capstan, that's called. And uh, this is a standard power takeoff arrangement for the for the Land Rover. Yeah, they they were an optional thing you could buy. Any Land they'd fit most of the Land Rovers, and they bolted on the bumper, and the uh, the crankshaft pulley drove the worm that drove the winch to make it revolve around. Yeah. So it's mechanical rather than hydraulic. It's mechanical, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looking at Richard's one, it's got a little little ring on the floor. Oh, yeah. And you pull that up if you're going down a hill or going around corners or something. What was the story with that? That original one was instead of having the later ones had a lever for front wheel driver, you could disconnect the, um, the, the four wheel drive unit. If you put it in the low range, it automatically went to four wheel drive. Yep. If you're in the paddock was a, and you want to get the speed on, you'd actually punch the lever down, but yeah. you disengage it. Yeah, but the yeah. ring on the floor in the early ones were for engaging 
four wheel drive or driving the front axle. So you had to hold that up? No, I think you it locked. Oh, okay. But you've got I to just dark, imagine when he said that, you know, you've got to <laughs> bend down, grab this bloody ring and, and right hold it up yeah, I'm, while you're, I'm until you don't sure. need it anymore and you let it go. So you're no, sort yeah. of a bit like you know, twin sticks or something. That's you, right. You've got the thing on your knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, be so that's one, two, three, four. There's four, well, including the handbrake, there's five levers in there. That's right, yeah. yeah and uh, the option, they also had a heater that you could buy from uh, made by Smith, the company in England. They yeah. put that on to try to keep yourself warm or thaw your hands out. Yeah. yeah. Just looking across the front here, you sort of look at your average Land, land Rover, sort mm -hmm. of, you know, they've got two little right. slots here that open up, let yeah. the air through. And you, this hasn't got one unless this is. The whole thing is one, is it? The whole thing is going to get two brackets on the side there, and everybody shares the air as it comes through. You oh, can't have so, one or so the, the other. Whole lot, the whole, the whole lot, lot folds out. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing about these, the, the park lights are up on the, on the firewall here. Most Land Rovers had to get all the lights down on the front. Sure. A bit uh, like the old comma when they started that. The, yeah. you know, the, the, the lights were getting broken by the boots that, that were oh, going, okay. you know, they were yeah. sitting back and suddenly they, yeah. oh, that's the step, the lights right. were here, you know, smash. Yeah. Yeah. And so they put them a bit further out right. to stop that from happening. All this is evolution, really. <laughs> yeah. so you break this, break that. Oh well, we won't do that, that next time. We'll have to put them here, put them there. That's so right. it's the top here's got aluminium um, check, not checker plate, just rib stuff on it. This was another option actually they put on here for the radio. Was otherwise when they flexed, they used to crack the mud guards. So they put these on here to stiffen the guards. Oh, up. Okay. So that's and your this, average radio aerial from 1951. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you they, could talk to guys in, in Invercargill with that. You know, the great big <laughs> box things. I don't know how far it went, but it's just another one of those. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and like the, the other one, the, everything comes off it, that folds forward, that the doors folds, come off, yeah, everything the, the just... The canvas comes off and the, it folds down. And in the military, but they float. Um, that's another challenge we had when we trained in, in Wairu and places like that. Um, I couldn't believe a Land Rover would float, but the guy proved me wrong. I was very happy to find out how a Land Rover floats. But that's I, remember, I remember watching a film <laughs> called The Gods Must Be Crazy, and it starts <laughs> off with this bloody Coke bottle <laughs> and lands in front of this little bushman. You know, that's little, right. And yeah. he's sure the, something from heaven's fallen, I better take it back and throw it off the end of the earth. So he went on this mission to look for the end of the earth to throw the Coke bottle back in. But as part of that, the, you know, the guy that, that, that's falling in love with a woman, that's right. you know, <laughs> goes through a gate and he stops it quickly and run around and put a rock underneath to, to stop right. the land. But anyway, for some reason, he's got the winch in a tree. That's right. And this, he's not paying attention and Land Rover's quietly winching itself up this tree. How would they do that? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit, yes, I'm, I'm a bit, you know, I'd like to try that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it had a hydraulic winch on the front. It must have been because the capstan wouldn't operate that way. And he, he must have locked it. And I think she must have fallen over in the creek or something. He went to rescue me, turned around the land, it was dangling from the tree. But how did he get it down? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe it had a spare high. Maybe he cut the rope or something, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a bit of a challenge. We might actually try that one day, folks, see if we can get a land rover and <laughs> wind itself up a side of a yeah. lamppost yeah, or the something. The gods must be yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was yeah, very great film. Good film. Yeah, you can get yeah. it out. Gods must be crazy. It's a, sort of a lesson in land rover. Good on really. lesson on land rover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, good on you, Roger. Thank you very, very good much for that. Yeah, good as gold. So there you go, folks. I'd like to thank Space TV for taking our low gear show after the very sad demise of Q Television. Unfortunately, Face TV isn't on the Freeview network. So if you know of people who enjoyed watching our Series 1 series on Freeview, perhaps let them know that we have some options for them to continue watching Series 2 of Low Gear. They just need to go to our webpage at www.lowgear.co.nz to find out what those options are. And they actually include watching the show online. Most other regional TV stations are screening our Low Gear series and that information is also on our webpage. So just go to www.lowgear.co.nz to find out more.